Okay. Take two. Well, not take two. Round two, I should say. Uh, catching up. Round two, February two. That's today. Trusting our higher power. Reading. The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beattie. Me, Lisa T. Holy, I did that all backwards. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's me, Lisa T. Coming at you with some positive energy. Reading. The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beattie. February 2nd. Trusting our higher power. Woo. Trusting our higher power. Made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood. And this is uh, step three in of, of Al-Anon. Step three of Al-Anon. Or step three of any 12-step recovery program. Made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood. What does that mean for me? What it means is... I want something to look a certain way. I want something to turn out this way. I want a certain outcome. I want to control things in the past. And I, as I practice this step, I, I turn my will over and I let things unfold as they may. And, and I don't regret things and I don't try and control it and I don't try to make something happen. I let it all unfold and I just do the next right thing for myself. Or do the next inspired action that comes to me because I'm trusting in a higher power outside of myself. Okay, so we make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood him. Meaning we trust that whatever happens is happening for good reasons as well. That's what it also means to me. It can mean many things and it can mean anything for whatever it means for you. Okay, so much talk about a higher power. God, as we understand God. So much joy as we come to understand him. Spirituality and spiritual growth are the foundations of change. So if you want to change, we got to have some spirituality and spiritual growth. If we want to change, do you want to change? Do you want to be better? Do you see where you get hiccups in life? Do you see where you stumble? Do you see where you trip over your own feet? Do you see where you get in your own way? Well, then welcome to a spiritual journey where you can create change. Okay. Ah, recovery from codependency is not a do-it-yourself tax task, just like the last reading. We don't do these things alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. Reach out for help. That's why we're all here for each other. That's why we're. That's why we have a phone. That's why we have the ability to talk. It and and that's and and I definitely need that because my mind will create a perspective. My mind has a belief system, so I need others to help me see things in a new light. Did Did you ever have a conversation with someone when you were struggling and you're like, oh my God, I never saw it that way, right? So you, you didn't have the ability. Someone else brought something and you were like, oh, yeah, wow. I didn't have the ability to look at it that way. So we, we need others in our lives to help us um, clear our perspective. Okay. Uh, recovery in, from codependency is not a do-it-yourself task. Is God a relentless task maker? A hard-hearted, shaming wizard with tricks up his sleeve? Is God deaf? Uncaring? Haphazard? Unforgiving? No. No, a loving God, a caring God, that is the God of our recovery. So God is not putting, I mean, I, at times you know, I thought like, oh God, why is God doing this to me? Or, oh, um, here we go. God's teaching me a lesson. Like God is not like uh, a trickery, you know, it's not about trickery. And, and like I said, a wizard with tricks up his sleeve, or he's not hard hearted or shaming. God is loving and caring. That is the God of our recovery. No more pain than is necessary. Pain is the touchstone, though, of recovery. It's like not, it's not until we're like on our knees, like in fetal position, like internally or actually physically, <laughs> um, where we're like, okay, I will not spend another second of another minute of another day living like this. Something's got to get, you know, I give up. I surrender. I surrender. Um, that's, that's the pain that is necessary sometimes for, 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 for change, but no pain that is necessary. That's the God of our recovery. He doesn't allow any more pain than is necessary for usefulness, healing, and cleansing. As much goodness and joy as our heart can hold, as soon as our heart is healed, open, and ready to receive. That's what God offers. As much goodness and joy as our heart can hold, as soon as our heart is healed, open, and ready to receive. Then we get that. Then we get the goodness and joy when our heart is open and ready to receive and healed. God God is approving, accepting, and instantly forgiving. God has planned little gifts along the way to brighten our day. And sometimes big, delightful surprises, perfectly timed and perfect for us. If you can trust everything I just said, welcome to peace and serenity. <laughs> A master artist, God will weave together all our joy, sadness, and experience to create a portrait of our life with depth, beauty, sensitivity, 
color, humor, and feeling. Oh, I love that. I feel like that's what God has definitely done in my life. God, as we understand him, a loving God, the God of our recovery. So this is just basically a reading about what you can look, what you can think of a God as, what you can think of a higher power as, all these things, accepting, approving, loving, um, creating something for you, that with uh, uh, creating a life for you of depth, beauty, sensitivity, color, humor, and feeling. Amen to that, right? So here's your prayer for today. Today, I will open myself to the care of a loving God. Then I will let God show me love. I will open myself to the care of a loving God. And then I will let God show me love. A frickin' men. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day.